So welcome, everybody. Welcome to a new Human Experience podcast. Today is December the 16th, and the topic for this evening is sorting out reality. Um, I was inspired to talk about what reality is and also how to, what we need to do in order to sort out reality, because I was um, listening to a video by Jason Estes, and he talks about different understanding of reality. So he, he mentioned that um, before, before the, the changeover of the new energy, before in the old energy, reality is our understanding of reality is that there is one reality and we can all experience that reality. So we, we, it's kind of reality is something out there that we can all observe. And we have to kind of adjust our own understanding to what is um, real for everyone else. So there is this idea that reality is a shared experience. And then he also mentioned that, well, that's the, in the old energy, that's the old understanding, but actually reality is not shared, that we each have our own reality and reality has never been shared. And there's, there's no such thing as shared reality. It's just that in the old energy, our understanding of what reality is, is very limited and, and, um, and maybe even um, very controlled so that we can play a different kind of game. Whereas now in the new energy, we come to a, um, a better understanding of what reality is. And when I heard that, I really resonated with that. So that's why I want to really share my understanding of what reality is. And also give some suggestion of, of um, how we can, what's the best way to reorient ourselves and remap our own sense of reality. So that's why the topic for this evening is sorting out reality. So let me just begin by kind of um, stating what our old energy um, understanding of what reality is. So if I go up and look, if I go and look at um, the definition of reality up, I think I, this, this is a, a definition that I got from Webster's Dictionary. So what is the definition of reality? Reality is the true situation that exists, something that actually exists or happens. And then it goes on further to say that the, it's the quality or state of being real. And it's a real event, entity, or state of affairs, or the to totality of real things and events. So um, we, when I go on to look at other dictionaries, it's something similar. So in another dictionary, define reality as what actually is happening what you can experience from your sensory inputs, meaning our hearing, our sight, um, how we, our sense of touch, our sense of smell and taste. So these, if we can sense something, if we can actually hear something, see something, touch something, then that is real. So that's what our current definition, um, agreed on definition of reality is. And for the longest time, that's really how we define reality. And we believe that there is this one reality that we, we call it the truth. So there is this one reality or truth that we can all experience and that reality, and we can all experience that same, the same events, the same thing. Um, in the same way, and that this reality is definitive, and meaning that that's it. This there's only this one reality, this one truth, and when it is true, then everybody can experience the same thing. 
However, my understanding of reality is um, not like this or not really like this. So I'm not this this evening, I'm not here to tell you what reality is because I can't. I or at the very least, I choose not to because reality for me is something that is very different for you. And we in the past, we have that that assumption or I would say presumption that reality is something that like if we can all experience that thing then then that's real otherwise it's not real um and that is not true so for for example um this this last night i think i i got an email from lucy i think some of you know who she is and in her email, she, she shared an experience she had. She, she was in a place, I forgot the name of the place, it's somewhere in, um, in Costa Rica where she is currently. And she was just going to a part of Costa Rica. Um, there's a beach area that's called Whale Tail. And so she was walking on the beach um, with a friend of hers, which is John. And I actually know John as well. I've met him in Toronto. So I know who she's talking about. So the two of them are just walking along the beach. And um, Lucy in her email shared that she actually heard a kind of like a, um, like a, a, a buzzing sound, a rather jarring sound, um, jarring in that it, it is it is fairly loud. Uh, she can hear it, and she was asking John, "Hey, can you hear that? You know what that sound is about?" And you know, John is like, "What? What sound? I, I don't hear anything. It, we at the beach. There's no sound, except for the 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 sound of the um, ocean close by." So. And then so after a while, she got it that, you know, she's the only one out of the two that's actually hearing it. And I um, actually raised that, that I, I, I mentioned that is that, that this is a very simple example of two people, two people actually that I know personally, um, Lucy and John, and they are both at the same place at the same time. And they are not experiencing the same reality. And that for me really tells so much about what reality actually is. So we in a, a, um, we kind of assume that when two people can are at the same place at the same time, and um, both are humans, both have, you know, both have you know kind of normal hearing normal sight normal everything else uh, in terms of their their um, five senses they must have witnessed the same reality however the the reality the real reality the true reality is that for they are living in two very different reality you know for for one thing um, Lucy can hear things that is beyond the um, the the aud audio capacity of someone else. So, and this is this is just a one very simple example. There are actually many examples that I'm sure we have all experienced is that not all of us hear the same sounds. And even if we hear sound, it does not mean that we both hear the sound at exactly the same way. We don't all see the same sights, even though we may see the thing, but some people, may be able to see energy as like, well, we know that Sifu James can see energy. And when we are all in the same room with him, we don't have, we don't all have the same um, 
we're not in the same reality as he is because he can see something that we don't see. And because of this extra sensory ability, so his uh, reality is, a, is different from us. And we all assume and presume that, well, because we all have five senses and we're all in the same room, we all can see the same thing that we are all in the same reality. And that is not the case. True reality is not like that. We each have our own reality because even if we see the same things, um, the capacity of our sight each is very unique. Some people may be able to see a range of colors that's beyond others. Some for, some, for example, some people are colorblind, so they don't see certain range of colors. So their reality is slightly different from us. I can hear things that no one else can hear. I can smell things. I can smell aromas that no one else can smell. So there are some people that have these capabilities to sense energy in a very different way, even though I also have the, the regular five senses that everyone else have. And it's not because I'm special. It's just that I, my body has unlocked in a way that allows me to have an expanded capacity to see things beyond what other people can see and to sense things beyond what other people can see. And we, even when we only have the regular five senses, no one can see exactly in the same way that someone else who may be right next to them can see. And the same goes for hearing, the same goes for smell and all that. And if our sensory inputs is so unique for each person, then our reality, the reality that we construct in our um, men, in our mind's eye would be different. It may not have to be drastically different. It may just be slightly different, but it will be unique. So that really means that we each actually have our own unique reality and that um, the assumption that everyone shares the same reality, the same understanding, the same um, right, the, the, the same weight and be able to see the same reality. That's not a that's actually not a um, What's the word for it? That's actually not the case. That's actually not a viable assumption anymore. And it has never been a viable assumption. It's just that we have enough of our realities being overlapping each other that we gloss over. Most of the time we gloss over. The, the differences and we, because of the way that we have been trained is that we try to not rock the boat, we try to fit in. And so all of these, these um, beliefs and ideas contributed to our assumption and presumption that we all share same reality or at least similar realities and that is no that's not the case and especially now we are actually in in a time where in a certain part of of um, of the the society wants to create a particular narrative a particular reality and kind of and blasted it in, and broadcasted it to the rest of the um, the rest of the population, and so now more than ever, it is very important to sort out what reality 
truly is for you. And also sort out what reality you prefer to experience as well. And I know you're going to say is, wait, what? What do you mean by sort out the reality that I prefer? Um, um, reality is something that is out there that I, I can't choose and pick the reality that I prefer. Um, well, you know, reality is not is not a singularity there's not just one reality and everyone has to is has to is supposed to just um take that singular reality and that's it and that's not the case is no no two persons can share exactly the same reality because no two persons have exactly the same experience. We don't, we just don't. We, we try to think that we do, but we don't. So how do we begin to sort out what reality means for us and also to choose the reality we prefer? Um, so we don't just have the ability to, we don't just, we, the, we actually have the ability to actually create our own reality as well. And that actually is what we are doing all the time. Anyways, we create reality for ourselves. We create reality for ourselves by um choosing what it is that we want to experience so what do i mean by that i remember a long time ago i i really can i can only see things that most other people see i can only hear things that most other people hear I don't have the extra sensory inputs that I am capable of now. However, I made a choice. I made a choice that I want to develop those things. And so by me focusing on um, developing those extra abilities. So it took me a while, but I'm here now that I actually am capable of hearing things that other people can't hear. I can feel things other people cannot feel. And that is not something that I like. I'm, I'm was not born like that. But some people are born like that. For example, Sifu James has always been able to you know, see energy. So he was born like that. But I was not born like that. I develop. This is something that I made a choice and I develop it. And so we actually have the, the ability to choose reality. We may not be able to um, create the reality that we choose to experience overnight, but when we make a choice and take steps to support that choice, then we actually can create the reality that we want to experience and that goes for well pretty much everything and um so so how how do we get there how do we choose the reality that we want to experience that we prefer to experience i can say that like one of the ways, I'm not saying that this is the only way, this is one of the ways that I found has worked for me. And you are each and everyone who, who wish to can find their own way, or if you want to, you can try my way to see whether that works for you or not. So what I found is that the, um, like there's a couple of steps and these steps may take a short time and it may take um, a longer time but these steps are 
First is to find an area in your life that is not working the way that you prefer it to be. So find something that you, a part of you um, that you, you don't agree, you, you want some change. So, so you kind of decide what it is that you, you want to change first. And then you just sit with the situation sit with the situation, meaning that you just hold that your um, disagreement. So you, you don't agree your judgment, whatever it is, you hold the whole of that. So you just sit with that whole situation and you allow whatever negativity, any disagreement that you have with that reality, any negative emotions, any frustrations, all of that, anything that is um, keeping you in opposition, keeping you not liking that situation. You allow all of that to just come up and leave no stones unturned. Just allow it to come up. Don't try to resist it. Don't try to repress it, just allow it to come up. Whatever comes up, you say, okay, thank you. I accept that because that is something that is real. And um, so you, you, you look at that. And then once you look at that, then you come to a point of neutrality where you sit with that enough that it's no longer, you no longer feel the negative parts of it. You no longer feel that you need to keep this judgment on it. So once you have that clarity, then you get to the, the, the neutrality, then get clear on what you prefer the reality to be instead and hold your preferred vision in your mind now in your heart now for as long as you can or at least hold it for a period of three, five minutes, however long it is practical for you to be able to focus your intention on the result that you prefer. And then once you've done that, then the next step is ask yourself this question, what is the one step in the direction of your preferred reality that you can take in this moment? So I know it's, um, it's just, I want to actually give an example so that you can all better understand what do I mean by, you know, sitting with it and all that. So an example is, eating in restaurants. So uh, currently, um, I have to have certain procedure in order uh, and certain um, and, and produce evidence of um, certain papers in, in order to be able to sit down in a restaurant and eat, like walk into any restaurant and be able to order food and sit down there and eat right in the restaurant. So currently, that is something that I really don't like because I do enjoy, like, I love a good pad thai. I love a good um, curry. I, I used to really enjoy going out and, you know, having a nice, peaceful lunch by myself and to enjoy those food. So I enjoy eating. So in this situation, current situation that I cannot just go into any restaurant and do that even though I have money and I have the time to do that I but for some bizarre reason I am not able to do that currently and that really gets me I don't like that situation so I want to change that so so what I want what I can do is really to sit with all my judgment about you know this is really stupid why can't we do, why can't we just go and eat? Because, you know, I can, I can take out, I can go in the restaurant and, and take out food, but what's the difference between me 
ordering the food and eating there. So all that is like all, allow whatever judgment, whatever negativity, frustration to come up. Just sit with this situation and how I feel about that situation and all that judgment. Just sit with that long enough so that I get to the part where, okay, I am done being um, judgmental of this situation and get to the part where I am okay. I'm neutral. And then what is my preferred? So I kind of have a vision of what my preferred reality would be. I would really prefer to you know, be able to go and do walk into restaurant or the the food that I want, when I want, and wherever it is that I want. So that's my preferred reality. And I really hold that vision in my mind to, to see myself walking into restaurants that I used to enjoy going to, and then walking in and just sitting down, ordering food and enjoying the food there hold that vision and then the next thing would be to really feel how I enjoy eating there and being grateful that whoosh I can do that once again the coast is clear now and we're allowed to live that experience and make that experience real and then the next thing is now that I hold that vision for a while now so what is the one thing that I can do in this moment I can think of actually a couple of things that I can do in this case there is actually a restaurant that is not too far away from me and you know there are always people that don't follow or don't tow the official line, the, uh, the, the, the metrics. So there is actually this one restaurant close to me that is a restaurant that I've never been to. Um, so I don't know what the food is like there. However, from all accounts, this is one of the restaurants that I can go into, order food without needing to you know, show any papers or take any procedures in order to eat there. So I actually know where that restaurant is. It's not, I, I found that restaurant and I make a plan to maybe book a, a table there, find, find a place or maybe even call a friend of mine who may want to join me in this adventure to go out and eat and not have to... Um, do the 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 normal the 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 you know government things so um so just to finish up with um what it is that I'm trying to say is that reality is really for us to create. We each have the, the ability to create our own reality, regardless of what someone else's reality may be. We have that option to create the reality that we want. And all we have to do is, um, number one, really acknowledge that it is possible because we can't really create something if we don't really believe that it is possible because we always create according to our beliefs. So we have to truly believe that what we want to experience is possible. And when we, when we have that idea that it is possible, then, and we actually hold the intention for that, um, for us to actually experience and have an experience of that reality, then it is going to happen. That is how we create. We create from that. 
we have a vision and then we let go of any um, counter beliefs that does not support us to experience that reality and when we do that when we let go of all the all the reasons why we don't think we would experience it and we let go of all of that then it is up to the, the universe to make it happen to allow us to experience that there the caveat to that is that just because you can create for yourself it doesn't mean that you can create for someone else though for someone else um, unless that person is let's say a very young baby and and totally the it's up to you to create their reality then it's possible because they they really don't have their separate reality you're the one that's is responsible for creating their reality and in that case then you'll be able to create for them but for for the most part, what I'm trying to say is that you're free to create your reality and also respect someone else having their experience as well, because they can have a totally different experience, totally different reality. So you are free to create your reality and they are free to create their reality so that really is um, as simple as that. Um, well, <clears throat> that's all I have to say tonight, actually. That's, 